Welcome to the Friday Drive. The first couple that I've done got good feedback. Sounds like everybody enjoys it. So I'm gonna keep doing those. And in this video I wanna talk about, or this drive I should say, I wanna talk about my September results. So I guess as when this post, it'll be October 3rd or 4th. So just a September that just finished up. And definitely nothing to brag about, but the reason I wanna talk about it is because there's some really good learning lessons in it. And there's some really good kind of screw ups on my part that hey if you can avoid them or at least be aware of them then as you're going to see it, it can quite literally save you some money because it was not a good month and a lot of that had to do with some exterior uh you know dynamics going on that i did you know self-admittedly i shouldn't have let them affect me but they did and it, it, it cost me uh cost me not a huge amount it was still a green month but it, it's something that shouldn't have happened and that you need to be very aware of because the human mind is oh oh such a tricky place. So we'll put up on the screen right now my results for the month of uh, September and you can see there that I ended up making right around $1,680. And also maybe you're taking notice of that big old red number down there in the amount of negative 955. So that's what I really wanna focus on here is that, yeah, that was, that was a big loss, but the crazy part is and are we still going straight, Nate? Yep. Okay, the crazy part about it is that, and we'll now the screenshot we'll put up there shows that actual day, and it was actually a, a good day, but then the big trade happened where I lost, it was $1,500, and it was one of those situations where it wasn't even my strategy, it was me trying to get cute, it was me trying to just, you know, that's what's, have you ever heard of, you know, don't force a trade, don't force a trade. That's what can happen when you force a trade, is a big loss, and that really kind of wrecked my month in a, in a big way. And in fact, if you had, if I had taken that out, I would have actually grown my account on the month 11.8%. Now, 11.8% in one month, that's really good. And I mean, if you go to like bankrate.com and you check out what the CD rates are, so certificate of deposit, I mean, you can get, I'm making this up, so I don't know exactly what they are, but we'll call it 2%. It's gonna be right around here. So it's not a total lie, but if you go to bankrate.com and look at their CDs, so think of it's a deposit, I mean, you could get maybe 2% for like a year, maybe 2.5% for like 18 months. So 2.5% account growth in 18 months or 11% in one month. I'm gonna take the 11%, but I didn't get 11% because I screwed up with that $1,500 trade, which I'm gonna talk more about here in a second. But even with the 1,680, I still ended up growing my account by 6% in only one month. So I mean, like I said, it should have been much better than that but I'll take a 6% account growth or 5.8, 5.9. I'm not sure exactly what the math is. I actually wrote it down, but I'm trying to keep my eyes on the road too. 5.9%, I just saw it there. Um, and so I'll take it, especially when the you know the comparison is, well, I could have just put that money in a bank CD and gotten 2% in 12 months. I'll still take the, the 6% for one month. But let's go back to that loser. Why did I take the loss? Well, I will put back up that main screenshot again. And maybe you noticed over there a whole bunch of zeros. Well, there is a bunch bunch of times in September where I didn't even trade, which also kind of makes me feel better about all this because I was still able to grow my account by 6% and I didn't trade, you know, five or six, seven days. But the reason for that is early on in the month, I went out to California to visit my sister and brother-in-law out there. So right there was the vacation, wasn't making any money, wasn't, uh, you know, really tr trading or anything like that. I mean, I, I briefly looked at the markets, but I was, wasn't at my home computer or anything like that. And then later on in the month, you saw more zeros and that was due to the fact that I went and visited a buddy out in Baltimore. So again, I was, you know, a little miniature vacation from the markets. But here's the tricky part, was the month started off, and just as overall context, the month of September wasn't that great anyways. I mean, yeah, there are some decent, you know, movements out there, but volatility, I mean, it just wasn't there. There was something off. And uh, so it is what it is, but because it started relatively slow, and then because I had that California vacation where I, you know, didn't make any trades, the voices of, you know, Clay, this month isn't really, I mean, what are you doing? Like the month isn't really looking that good. It's not, your account's not really growing. This is going down to one lane, isn't it? Yep. All right. Hey, so, look, there's a Hayworth truck in front of us. Is that the first, is that another furniture? Yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> so I see that and those voices show up. And you know, again, shame on me. This, this is not an excuse. I'm, it's not like I'm new to the market. I recognize the voices. I thought, yeah, all right, well, you know, put back or whatever, you know, back off. And I had some months. And then just that day that I showed you, you know, it was coming, I was like, oh great, you know, the, the account is still looking like this, barely anything's going on, barely any growth, and now I have this Baltimore vacation coming up where I know I'm gonna be away from the markets for even longer. 
and I'm not going to be, be being trading there. I'm going to be ha out, you know, having fun. So then, then it's like, oh, well, all right, well, I, I, I need to do something. And, you know, in life, it's good to go out there and do something, right? Just give something a try. But in trading, you don't always want to be doing something. The something you should be doing is nothing, sitting on your hands. And this is exactly why. I try to force something. I try to get cute, like I said, and it ended up costing me the big trade. So just remember that when you are out there trading, the whole, oh great, oh great, I, I just need to make something happen, that, that's a very real voice. And it can come up when you have just different things where either you're not happy with your month, or in my case, I wasn't happy. And then I also knew that I was gonna have more days away from the market where I wasn't gonna be able to you know, grow at all because I was gonna be obviously away. And that's what ultimately got up and bit me was that voice of not being happy and then knowing that I wasn't gonna have you know maximum time. So I heard he needed to you know take advantage of the time that I had. And that's how a lot of people it works where you know maybe you only have an hour before you have to go into your day job. Or you know, I only got 90 minutes before I have to go on my day job. And that's very, very tricky situation to be in because you can really feel that voice of oh, I need to I just need to make a trade because I only have 90 minutes. And it can really bite you. So be very aware of that voice and you know, let my results speak for themselves. I mean the month would have been very, very different, but because I let that one voice show up for that one trade, my one month went from you know 11% uh, account growth down to 6% account growth because of one trade. One trade, 11% to 6%. So it's very real, and I don't like you know admitting that. I'd much rather be like, look at me, I just made $800,000, but nobody learns from that. Nobody learns from those sorts of situations other than, oh wow, so I'm just gonna sign up for a brokerage account and I'm gonna make no, these are the videos that hopefully people learn from because that was a mistake on my part. I don't like publicly confessing those mistakes. I don't like publicly confessing, hey, I made 1600 bucks, but you know what? Welcome to the real world of trading. You can't have massive months every single month. Sometimes life happens, right? And, and life was happening to me, but the problem is I let life you know, crunch down on me and it forced me to make, not like lots of bad decisions, one. One bad decision, that's all it takes is one trade and it can really transform the way your month or you know everything is looking. Um, so it, take that away. Don't let the force voices, be very aware that when you're day trading or any sort of trading, you know, forcing a trade is very, very real and it needs to be avoided for all the reasons you just saw right here. So hopefully this helps and um, I get it, yes. Feel free, trolls, dude, you suck, you only made six. I know, I know, I'm a terrible trader, I get it. I'll save you the time, you don't have to tell me. Uh, but for those of you that are here looking to actually learn, yeah, turn left at this time. Turn left. All right, then, yeah, take this for what it is and be very aware of that forced trade voice because, like I said, all it takes is one and uh, things can change around quite a bit. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I want to invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you want to call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.